All right, more excerpts. I love this line. To peel back the layers of dysfunction, the Herald interviewed several sources inside and around the organization who spoke on the condition of anonymity for fear of retribution <laughs> from the Patriots. That's a great line. Most, most were of the same mind. Coaches and players collaborated in good faith, but over nine months, the relationships and processes underpinning the offense became so strained, they engendered internal doubt about the greatest coach of all time. Quote, it's always been about winning and doing what's best for the team. I really believe Belichick when he says that, one source said, I just think he really didn't understand how hard it was going to be, or in the words of another source, I love him, but he bleeped us. <laughs> Let's roll. It's presented by Tom Fair Tire. That's the quote. Curran, what's your biggest takeaway? Quote of the year. Biggest takeaway is that it's good to have all of this in one place chronicled in a chronological way because we dribbed and drabbed it out as the season went along. But this revisits all of those points and also brings to light how people felt at the time. Why were they so frustrated? What were the actual problems with the offensive install? How did people feel with it? And what were the smoking guns, which you can find in the article in terms of how it was executed and just the notion of, uh, we might have this excerpt too of, what do we do if this happens? Don't worry about it. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No wonder we'll people there. were frustrated. Right. right. So, I mean, the frustration level, you guys talked about at the top. Bill has over 23 seasons, had 22 where he had, in Bill we trust, from the fans, in large part the media as well, and certainly from his players. And in this one year, he frittered away a significant amount of it. All right. And the, the blame goes on him. He's the one who made the decisions, Tom. But do you look at anybody else and say, why didn't they come and save him? Whether it was Robert Kraft, whether it's one of the assistant coaches. The players tried. They tried as best they could. Uh, Mac did. Kendrick Bourne. Other guys did things. You could publicly and privately. But do you look at anybody else and say, where were you? No. Because no. Bill has created a fiefdom for himself to the point where, whether it's Robert Kraft or Jonathan Kraft, they both have spoken the words. He has earned the right to call his shots the way they want paraphrasing, but they've made that very clear. Mm. That being the case, anything that happens is on Bill's watch. Who is going to step up to him? I mean, Scott Pioli might have back in the day, maybe Thomas Dimitrov, but it's not going to happen. Nick Casario never was that guy. Maybe Josh McDaniels when he was here. Mangini. Mangini. Yeah, Mangini. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's no one there Forget to step it, right. up, and I think the Crafts do not want to be perceived as meddlesome, but I think that, as Michael pointed out, you know that they've frittered away some of that goodwill as well. Who in this do you think takes the biggest hit? Unfortunately, probably Patricia and Judge, because I just don't think the buck still stops with Bill. I think it's definitely Patricia and Judge. I mean, other than that source saying Bill bleeped us, I don't think Bill takes much of a hit. There's no embarrassing details in no. here. Like there is about Joe Judge, you know, some details in here about Joe Judge coaching across positions, meaning instructing other players at other positions in training camp to the point where those positional coaches then had to go to those players and say, don't listen to that. He doesn't know what he's talking right. about. That's an embarrassing detail. Joe Judge talking loudly in meetings early on in the season to try and get his voice heard and try and, like, assert himself. And then ultimately not even being in those meetings or being sort of downplayed yeah. throughout the course. Yeah. You, you know, know what? Like I'll take it again. I think Joe probably takes it the worst. I mean, yes. basically acknowledging that by October it was like, how about no more are you talking to the quarterback? I think that's a bad signal for a guy to have that out there. So all of that, I think Judge takes it worse than Patricia, who's in some ways become, amazingly enough, a sympathetic figure in this. Yeah, I mean, uh, at one point, said, someone says uh, Mac Jones did not like working with him at all. You know, it's a tough hit. Okay. Did all not right. like him at all. I'll agree with you guys that it looks, it looks the worst for Joe Judge on, on, on paper and in this piece, but it's still Bill. I mean, Bill created this, he created this environment. Can you imagine the New England Patriots had this going on. Now, I, I was half joking when I said this is some Cleveland Browns, Arizona Cardinals stuff. This was happening with the Patriots. So you bring in a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about to run your offense and Joe Judge, and he's going around. He's doing he's going outside of his lane. You got Matt Patricia doing this and you make this call and you don't have the humility to go to your players and say, all right, fellas. I screwed this Let me up. ask you guys, what does Bill do to make that right to these two individuals who we put on the front lines when they weren't suited to do it? What will Bill do to make it right beyond saying, I'm going to make sure you have a landing spot here forever? But they shouldn't have taken it, though. Because there's a reputation. I, well, in advance, yeah. I, but that's the other thing. And you're talking about the age factor with Bill and the game passing him by. I don't think it's that as much as it is. I believe that everybody else is pretty dumb. And I believe also that I'm really smart. And I know that I created, to a large extent, these guys. We'll figure it out. And the we'll figure it out by the end of camp had yeah. turned into, 
by October, we'll figure. By November, we might figure it out. And he kept moving the timeline. Oh, line listen, back. his uh, arrogance, overconfidence, definitely part of the story. Let's get you another excerpt here. Patricia's cripplingly conservative play calling uh, reigned the offense in during that Thursday night home loss to Buffalo. Veteran wide receiver Kendrick Bourne became the public face of frustrations when he told reporters post game the Patriots need to scheme up better and be more aggressive. Others in the locker room agreed, believing Patricia had called the, the game scared to avoid getting blown out. That game was bull crap. One source said in his own press conference, Jones called to be coached harder or perceived spit in the eyes of the staff. Patriots players were given the following day off a rare decision from Belichick, particularly after a loss. No meetings or film corrections. Just go home. All right. So again, it was sort of there for us to see if you wanted to believe the dirt was, you know, underneath the scenes. It was there. And now we're seeing it. Yeah, I remember you saying, remember this, we did uh, you know, PGL that night and you had a problem with 2410 because you said, hey, they were pretty much, you said this, they were, they were, they yeah. were playing scared. You they were no punting. Problem. They were trying to save themselves on the scoreboard. And that's when Mac had the screw the quick game. Let's go. Let's try and press it down the field. They're punting from midfield and they hadn't had an opportunity to even move the ball downfield. You could tell that they were in a retreat mode. Do you think Bill O'Brien fixes all this? I do. The hire of Bill O'Brien. 100%. I think Bill O'Brien's going to come in here because I think that the optimism that's going to filter through the team, if you're thirsty and you get a glass of water, you feel better. If you haven't had a drink in a year and you get a glass of water, you feel on top of the world. And that's how these guys are going to feel. Anything that Bill O'Brien says that's competent and makes sense, and when he has an answer to their questions, they're going to act like he is an absolute visionary. <laughs> okay, I like that. But what I, what I do wonder about and I'm a little concerned about, I'm, I'm serious here. Like Bill's hero, Paul Brown, you know, you know why Paul Brown left Cleveland initially and, and then wound up in Cincinnati? Because he was fired. He was fired in Cleveland. The players turned on him. They said he's out of touch. He's lost his way. And he wasn't done coaching, but he was done coaching there. Look, these players saw this happen last year. How, what, what are the scars like from this? And a guy who always says, I do what's best for the team, yeah. be accountable. He wasn't accountable don't, last year. Don't, That's don't, the biggest disturbing thing for me. Don't start out one and three. I think it's tenuous. I, he was I, not I, accountable. I don't think he has the undying faith of the players anymore. Absolutely. Start out 4-0, and oh, and that sort of goes away. So what's like, it look I, like, I, too? I, I, right. What's it look what's like? Absolutely. Like, yeah. If you look like you're stuck in neutral and spinning your wheels and guys are still colliding in mid-route and it looks horrible throughout August the way it did, you know, unconscionably bad, right. to the point where I'm, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's got to be better when it starts. Right. If, if we see that again, then, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a mid-season firing, but it'll be tick, tick, tick.